So as I'm sure we all know, the stock market is up a lot, like a lot, a lot. And despite the stock market being up so much, Warren Buffett has been actively selling off his positions. And I've kind of been hearing a lot of people been saying recently that Warren Buffett has lost his edge, he doesn't know what he's doing, and he's really just scared. And personally, as someone who almost religiously studies Warren Buffett's investment strategy, I don't believe this to be true. And I want to explain to you guys what I think is going on here. So Warren Buffett doesn't pay any attention to what the overall market is doing. He literally could care less. He focuses on the individual businesses that he's invested into, and he focuses on the future outlook of those businesses. He doesn't try to predict what stock prices are going to do or where they're going to be in the short term, because again, he likes to focus only on the individual businesses and what their futures look like. Warren Buffett is a long-term investor who practices the value investment principles of Benjamin Graham, who is also the author of The Intelligent Investor. And with that being said, let's take a look at a couple passages from the book so that we can get a little bit more insight as to what may actually be going on here. So the first quote that I want to read comes from page 477 of The Intelligent Investor. And this says, as Graham liked to say, in the short run, the market is a voting machine, but in the long run, it is a weighing machine. And the second passage that I want to bring up is at the bottom of page 45, where it says, As Graham never stops reminding us, stocks do well or poorly in the future because the businesses behind them do well or poorly. Nothing more and nothing less. These two quotes can give us a deeper insight into what is actually going on here. So in the short term, the market is indeed a voting machine, and in the long term, it is a weighing one. And this is simply because investors and analysts both pretty much just choose which companies they are bullish on, which tends to pump up the valuations of these companies quite dramatically. This dramatic increase in a stock's price essentially comes from the investment community voting that one business is going to continue producing more and more profits in the future. However, by the stock price increasing, investors already end up paying for those future profits. In the long run, if the business doesn't perform to the investor's expectations, then ultimately the stock price will come back down to meet the fundamentals of the business and its true performance. And this is really why I decided to add in the second quote, is because in the long run, it is only the underlying business that will create sustained value for the shareholders. If that business does not end up performing, then investors will start pulling their money out and the stock price will fall. This simple fact to stock prices is what makes stocks more risky as their prices increase. Because the more the stock price increases, the more the underlying business has to perform to justify the price. Therefore, what I believe is going on in the market right now is a tremendous amount of optimistic voting. Investors are essentially voting that the economy is going to bounce back absolutely perfectly and that everything is going to be all good. Now, here's the thing. If anything happens that causes the economy to not rebound almost perfectly, then right now is a dangerous time to be investing because that's what valuations are currently reflecting. So let's take a look at some facts that are coming out right now and try to get a better idea of what is actually going on. So this article right here was released on May 28th of 2020, and it says over 40 million Americans have filed for unemployment during the global situation. Real jobless rate over 23.9%. So this essentially means that just about 24% of Americans right now are currently unemployed. Now, if we take a look at another article that was released on May 11th, this says Great Depression 2020. The unofficial U.S. jobless rate is at at least 20% or worse. And if we scroll down, we can see that during the Great Depression of 1933, the unemployment rate peaked at 24.9%. So if we go back to the first article, we can see again that the real jobless rate is over 23.9%. So the unemployment rate in the US right now is literally approaching levels of the Great Depression. Now, the counter argument is that when the economy reopens fully, everyone is going to go back to work. Like, all the jobs are going to be coming back. Now, personally, I don't really believe that this is the case. If we take a look at this article from CNBC that was released on May 20th, this says most Americans who lost jobs describe layoffs as temporary, but research indicates otherwise. And then if we go to another article released by Forbes, this says some 42% of the jobs lost during the global situation are gone for good. And this is where it starts to get worrisome because if not all jobs are coming back, but the market is reflecting an almost perfect reopening, then it's kind of a recipe for investor disappointment. So now let me show you guys a couple of examples that kind of just show you what's really going on here. And so this article was released on May 22nd and it says Hertz files for bankruptcy as car rentals disappear amid the global situation. And to my knowledge, Hertz is the second 
second biggest car rental company in the United States. Now, if we go to Hertz on Yahoo Finance and we just take a quick scroll down, we can see that they had 38,000 full-time employees. So this is potentially close to 38,000 people who may not have a job when the economy starts to fully reopen. And this is not the only case. I have a couple more articles here. So this article right here says JCPenney files for bankruptcy. And for those of you who don't know, JCPenney is indeed filing for bankruptcy. If we take a look at another link that I found, 13 retailers have filed for bankruptcy in 2020 so far. And these are the list of the 13 retail companies that are filing for bankruptcy right now. So the reality is we don't know how bad the job losses will be until everything starts opening back up again. But what we do know is that 100% of the jobs are not coming back. I mean, let's take a look at Air Canada as well. This article says Air Canada to lay off 20,000 workers as the global situation collapses travel industry. Now, Air Canada also said it's probably going to take more than three years for the airline to get back to where it was pre-global situation. So this means that most likely not all of these 20,000 workers are going to have a job for at least the next three years. So again, this is where it starts to get worrisome because if people aren't working, then how will mortgages and bills be paid? If people aren't paying their bills, how will they afford luxuries like new cars or the new iPhone? Also, what will happen to everyone's debts when they can't repay them? How will this affect the banking industry? The reality is the consumer fuels the economy. When the consumers are unemployed, then the whole economy suffers. And I mean almost 70% of US GDP comes directly from the consumer. Even if the unemployment rate comes back to around 10%, imagine the damage that will have on the overall economy. So next here, I have the new vehicle sales reports. So we can see that only 8.6 million vehicles were sold in April of 2020. Now, if we take a look at May, we can see that the numbers are actually much better. There was 12.2 million new vehicles sold in the US in May. However, while this number is much better than the April low, it is still quite a bit off from the new vehicle sales that were reported at the beginning of the year. And also, I do think that April is going to be pretty much the worst month, at least for the time being, unless there is some sort of second wave or something crazy happens to the economy. But regardless, again, the sales are down quite a bit. And when the economy reopens, if people still don't have jobs, then I really don't think that these new car sales are going to be coming back to their previous highs anytime soon. And if we take a look at the last 25 years of new car sales, we can see that during the Great Recession, new car sales absolutely fell off a cliff. And then somewhere around the end of 2009, new car sales had a spike up and then came right back down. And then look how long it took for new car sales to come back to their previous peaks. It took almost five years. And this is really what happens to the economy is you see a sudden shock and then it takes some time for the economy to actually start recovering. So this V-shaped recovery that everyone is talking about, the longer that the lockdowns consist, the more unlikely it seems a V-shaped recovery is actually going to happen. And in my opinion, it looks like we're probably going to get something like the 2008 Great Recession, where we see this slow, gradual recovery of the economy. We can also take a look at retail spending in April. And I wish that I could find retail spending in May, but I haven't been able to find anything quite yet. But regardless, let's take a look. So clothing stores saw almost an 80% decline in retail spending. Electronics saw just over 60%. Furniture saw 58.7%. Sporting goods, 38%. Restaurants, department stores, and gasoline stations all saw about a 30% decline. Grocery stores, 13.2%. And then non-stores, which is online stores, saw an 8.4% increase in retail spending. Overall, retail sales plunged a record 16.4% in April of 2020. So assuming that the economy doesn't have to shut back down due to a second wave or anything, then April should be the worst month. However, even though April is the worst month, I do think that this is going to be a slow recovery of the economy. Also, this lack of spending is causing businesses to have to lower their prices to try and increase the demand. And I have another link for that right here. So this article right here says that Tesla's just got cheaper. Elon Musk drops prices by up to $5,000. And this is what we are seeing across many different industries, is companies are having to lower their prices to try and increase consumer spending. And all you have to really do is just think about it for a minute. If companies are lowering their prices, then it also means that they are lowering their revenue. This is also known as deflation, and this is pretty much what we're seeing right now. Another key thing that I have to point out is that the economy doesn't move instantly. And if people do remain unemployed, then the numbers could continue getting worse as businesses continue to struggle to find retail sales. So I also am kind of under the opinion that we haven't quite yet seen all of the total bankruptcies that are going to happen due to the global situation. I think that as times go on and businesses have to fight harder and harder to get consumers to spend, that more and more businesses are going to continue going bankrupt. 
Overall, in my opinion, I think that the market is reflecting an absolute best case scenario outcome of everything. I also think that Warren Buffett is paying attention to the real data coming out and not what the overall market votes is going to happen. So let's close out the video with a couple more passages from the intelligent investor. And this says, even though investors all know they're supposed to buy low and sell high, in practice, they often end up getting it backwards. Graham's warning in this chapter is simple. By the rule of opposites, the more enthusiastic investors become about the stock market in the long run, the more certain they are to be proved wrong in the short run. And then the final passage I wanna read comes from page 181 of the same book. So there's a few things in this passage that I wanna point out. The first one is without bear markets to take stock prices back down, anyone waiting to buy low will feel completely left behind. And all too often, will end up abandoning any former caution and jumping in with both feet. And some of you watching my videos may be feeling this right now. I mean, we're seeing the stock market come back so aggressively that it kind of feels like we're missing out on some of the action. However, we really need to stay disciplined and not jump back into the market with both feet. This is what Graham calls emotional discipline when you are investing. And the second key point that I want to point out from this passage is that the longer a bull market lasts, the more severely investors will be afflicted with amnesia. After five years or so, many people no longer believe that bear markets are even possible. Now, doesn't this sound kind of familiar or kind of resonate with what is going on right now? I mean, the market has been producing consistent gains for so long that people think that the market can do nothing but go up. And in my opinion, I don't believe that is the case here. And the stock market has just lost so much touch with reality. I mean, the economy right now is suffering greatly, but the stock market just keeps going up and up and up. And it's kind of just creating this dangerous environment to be an investor right now. So I don't know about everyone else, but I'm doing my best to practice emotional discipline. And also I'm doing my best to not experience fear of missing out or FOMO. I simply just can't ignore what's going on in the real world. And I can't ignore what's going on to real businesses because keep in mind, it is the underlying business that is going to create sustained value for shareholders. So if the real economy is suffering, then eventually the fundamentals of these businesses are going to catch up with what the economy is actually doing. And honestly, I could be wrong, but again, I cannot ignore the facts that are coming out right now. So to summarize, I think that Warren Buffett is liquidating his assets because he's being fearful while everyone else is being greedy. And I think that he's selling the businesses in which he thinks the future outlook of those businesses have changed just like he did with his airline positions. I also think that he is liquidating these positions so that he can put himself in a better financial position to be greedy while everyone else is being fearful. Because remember, he is the one who said, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. And really, I think that's all he's trying to do right now. And with all that being said, thank you guys again so much for watching. Honestly, this is incredible and I just really appreciate all of your guys' support on my channel. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you everyone so much again, and I hope to see you again in my next video.